What's up guys? Today I have another 1911. This one is an SDS imports of the TSOS M1911A1. It's supposed to replicate the 1911 that was issued during World War II. Now there's a couple differences I've noticed right off the bat. Uh, the ejection port is larger. Uh, that's more of a commercial thing and it's supposed to aid with uh, reliability, bigger slot for these shells to eject out of. Um, and also I've noticed the hammer is larger. It's way better textured and it's wider. I love the markings on this side, even though that that's not correct. I like the looks of it. And then I love the, the, the flat finish that this gun has, but I really like how simple it looks. It's just a really nice looking gun and it feels really good in your hands. But then again, every 1911 does. The, Safety, even though it's small and only one-sided, for me, it's very easy to actuate. Also, another thing that was really stiff when I got it. Um, I will say the grips are a little bit slick, but um, they feel really good in my hands. And the mag release is really tight, and loading the magazine is really tight. Yeah, I wish the historical things about this gun were different. I wish this ejection port was smaller. I wish this hammer was smaller. I also wish it didn't bite me. But it looks like a very good replica of the World War II gun. Oh, I fucked that one up hardcore. For the price point these things are going for, <laughs> I'm pretty amazed. These things sell for around $339. Wow. Now it comes in this really cool box. Um, I really love the design of it. Uh, when you open it up, it comes with, uh, well, the gun, of course, one and one magazine. Now it comes with a cleaning rod and a brush, the instruction manual, but I think the box looks really cool. Um, going back to the differences, um, one thing I did notice when these guns were put right next to each other, which Military Arms Channel made a video comparing this to the original, and that's where I noticed this difference. The grips are different. So the grips are a little bit different color, and they're a lot, um, they're not as gnarled. The uh, original has a way better texture on it, and it's a little darker. But that is one difference I have noticed when he did the video. But honestly, the finishes looked very similar. Um, and it also gives you hammer bite, which I still have the little mark right here. So I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't do very well with this gun. Um, I only shot 100 rounds through it, so there's a chance that I just need to practice with it. But the main reason I was having a problem with it was I was flinching almost every shot because I knew this thing was going to bite me. Um, so it, the way I grab it, one-handed, I was fine. So if I grab it like this, there was no issue. You know, hold it out like this, there was no hammer bite. But when I got my support hand and I wrapped it like this, I naturally want to go as high as possible on the gun. And you can already see, I don't know on camera, but you can already see that my hand is curling up a little bit. and. It's very easy for it to shift up a little bit like this and pinch. So um, I got a pretty good mark on it and I was bleeding on it <laughs> when I was shooting it. So I had a hard time um, getting accurate shots off because I was having such a hard time. Um, Alex, who was with me, he didn't have any of the issues that I was having and this was his group. He did pretty good. And then this is my group. This is my best group. And I, I know I can do better than this. This is not very good to me. <laughs> but I was just flinching. I had to really take my time. And I most of the time I was shooting one-handed because when I shot one-handed, I didn't get as high up on the gun and I didn't get the hammer bite. So I tend to shoot one-handed and 
Honestly, I was still flinching because I was worried that it could um, bite me. Actually, that best group I got was one-handed, so. I'm already starting to get hammer bite. Ow, hammer bite. <laughs> Now I'm flinching because I know it's going to bite me. If you're used to higher end 1911s, you're going to complain about this trigger. But if you're used to Glocks, you're going to love this trigger. It's, it's got a little bit of play and then the trigger pull. It's not a bad trigger pull. And then the, the reset is really short. So it's got a good trigger on it, but I will say it's a little bit heavier if you're used to a higher-end 1911. But again, this thing sells for around $339. Also, the sights on it are uh, not terrible, but they're not really that big of sights. And honestly, if you put some white paint on that front sight, it would really help with accuracy. And there's an example of it biting me because I used two hands to aim through this thing. Also, this gun was extremely stiff when I first got it. So I just took the original oil out, gave it a very thorough clean, and just kind of cycled it like this a couple times. And honestly, when I buy guns, I tend to just kind of mess with them and do that a lot, and, you know. And it really helps break things in. The safety was really stiff when I first got it. Now it's really easy to actuate. And the same thing with uh, uh, the slide, trying to, uh, well, that's still really stiff, but it's broken a lot better. So the slide release, you could feel it scraping. Same thing with the safety and the slide was really heavy, but it all broke in. Um, I will say the magazine's still really stiff and really hard to, uh, to load. You can actually hear the thing scraping when you load rounds into it. That's one of the reasons why it's almost impossible to get the slide to go home with that magazine in it. Actually, I haven't successfully done it yet. Okay, I'm not gonna successfully do it. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> all right, so here's the magazine. I'm going to show you it loading. And yes, I know I'm using this loader for a single stack magazine, but this, this sucks. <laughs> Can you hear it scraping? Oh, it gets so much worse. Yeah. Oh. They seem to work. And I like the looks of them. But man, does that sound awful. I'm flinching. But... This magazine is awful to load. I mean, I've never had a single uh, stack magazine 
this hard to load. Um, one thing, um, so it's got this lanyard loop at the bottom, which is period correct, but um, watch out for this. I didn't have a problem with it, but I could see where it would be a problem. So if you're not used to it being down there and this magazine, it it's tricky to get it in there. If you slap it right, it'll pop in, but it's very easy to, when you're putting it in, I'm trying to demonstrate it, but sometimes it doesn't want to go in because this, when it locks up, it's a little stiff. Yeah. So sometimes if you tap it, it won't go in and you go in for a harder tap, just be mindful that lanyard loop is there because I can see where somebody would tap the magazine in and hit that lanyard loop. So definitely keep that in mind. You don't want to go like this, definitely go towards the, the front. Just an observation that that lanyard loop is right there at the back. So if you're tapping the magazine in, make sure you are mindful that that's there because that would not be fun to tap it really hard and have that lanyard loop go into your palm. So anyways, let's see here. Is there anything else that I can tell you about this 1911? Uh, it's really hard to get it to, to sit like this. I can tell you that. Come on. Now you say, in my videos you have no idea, you have no idea how hard that is. Ugh, it's brass guys, so I don't have to worry about it ruining anything, plus this isn't a higher end gun. Actually, that's not a very good statement. It is a well made gun. The machining is great, it's got a really good finish on it. Honestly. For $339, it's a steal. It's a fantastic handgun, in my opinion. So we only shot about 100 rounds through it, and the only time it had any problem was when I put some um, horridy zombie killer ammo in it. I had it for the longest time. It was just kind of funny. So we're trying some zombie bullets now from Hornady. Uh These are some hollow point green tip bullets. Also, I'm using some Wilson Combat magazines that are so much easier to load. I mean, I can load it on camera. Isn't that amazing? So, see how these work. Okay, ready? Yep, go for it. I'm gonna blow my hand up. It, it had a jam. So it's probably not going to like these. It had one issue with Alex, but it fed fine for me. So that's something to keep in mind that this thing may have some issues with hollow points. Um, I've shot a lot of 1911s that are finicky when it comes to hollow points, but honestly it shot flawless for me and it only had a couple hiccups with Alex, but we only shot about 20 rounds of it. So something to keep in mind, but we shot a hundred rounds of Mechgar, or not Mechgar, uh, Magtech, Magtech uh, 45s. I think it was Magtech. Anyways, we shot about a hundred rounds of that ammunition through it and it shot flawlessly. So I have a question for you guys. Would you want me to bring this back? I had an idea to get the thousand round bulk pack of 45s. I found a deal on them. Uh, I can get steel for this, but I don't know how well that would perform. Um, I saw another reviewer shoot steel through this thing and it was a little finicky. But if I got some brass thousand round packs and just shot it all in one day, would you guys want to see that? Just see how well it performs. I hate to see how my hand's going to look. I'll probably have a stream of blood going down it, but I'm just curious. Would you guys like to see how it would fare with a thousand rounds? If you guys would like to see more on this gun, let me know, and I hope you enjoyed this video.